Well, welcome everyone. Hello again. Welcome. Maybe finish the sentence you're on if you like. The train of thought. <laughs> it's really good to see you. It's, it's, it's a real honor to be here. Um, I'm a member of Crossroads. I've been here for nine years. And, and it's a real honor to uh, speak and teach. You know, God's really put a desire on my heart to teach. And, um, and um, so here I am, it's amazing. Um, um, I will pray in a, in a moment, but my wife and I remember the first time uh, Anthony asked us to teach something and I said, sure, I'd love to teach. So, I, so we said, well, let's, let's teach on healing because that's something that's really dear to our hearts. You know, the, the message of healing in the Bible. And, and, and we did at Wake Forest and we got one person. So, I mean, then we got two people. And, and, and then we got the, the journey through John, which was three years ago, Anthony allowed us to teach and it was fantastic. And then journey through Hebrews and then journey through Matthew last, last year. And we had a great crowd there. Uh, hands up if you were in journey through Matthew, some people. Look at that, you see, they come back. <laughs> They've come back and uh, we're friends, we're good friends. Um, yeah, there's Regina waving at me. Regina, Regina got baptized the other week, didn't you? Uh, and it was an awesome testimony. It was fantastic. So, well done. Um, let's pray. Um, and after I've prayed, if you want to move forward, and so I can see the whites of your eyes, if you want to, you can come forward. But if you want to stay where you are with your buddies, that's fine too. 9-11, um, right? It's, it's been a hard day for um, a lot of people. Um, I remember being home unusually at lunchtime on that day because I had a plumbing issue in my house and I switched on the news and I was in London and so it was 2 p.m. but it was you know, 8 p.m. here or you know, lunchtime and seeing it and then I had to go back to work and it was like, what is going on? But um, I really felt today, you know, I'm still praying for the, um, the people, the victims right the people that are hurting the mothers the fathers the children you know uh, the people that lost their lives so let's pray for that and the subject we're dealing with tonight we want to pray for that that God will open our hearts and our eyes uh, to the spiritual understanding of Genesis chapter 3 it's a huge chapter and we we meet you know our adversary tonight and we need to talk about that so let's pray Heavenly Father we thank you for bringing us here Father, we God, we thank you that we can meet in freedom. Father, we thank you for this church. Lord, we thank you for the pastors and elders here that do such a good job. Father, we ask you to uh, bless our time tonight. Lord, we ask you to open our minds. Lord, help us to understand the spiritual things in Genesis. Lord, help us to understand things from a thousand, thousands of years back. Lord, help us to have revelation in our hearts. Jesus, we give you preeminence tonight and we lift your name up in the name of Jesus, the Son of God, our Messiah over this meeting, Lord. And Father, we pray for all the people that have been hurt through 9-11, all those mothers, fathers, daughters, sons, soldiers, civil servants, people going about their everyday jobs in New York and Washington. Lord, we ask you to be with those people who are still hurting and, and bring them comfort this night. Lord, we ask you to protect our nation and look after our leaders and give them wisdom. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, it's, it's, as I said, it's great to be here. We're going to look at Genesis chapters uh, 3 and 4 tonight. Um, they're huge chapters. Chapters 3. Ch chapter, Genesis chapter 3, I think, is one of those big chapters of the Bible. Um, I mean, there are a number of them, um, and this is one of them. Um, so let me start off with uh, Job. Who likes the book of Job? I like Job. There's something nice about Job. Um, so Job 38. I'm going to read through, from Job 38. It's a wonderful uh, few chapters. If we had time, I would read Job 38, 39, 40, and 41 and finish there because it's so good but we're going to get a glimpse i think into god's heart of trying to understand some of the things from thousands of years back in genesis i'm reading from the niv that's that's the bible that i i used to teach from a bit on bibles i mean any bible 
you know, is good. Uh, I, I like the uh, New King James Version, the NIV, the NASB I use every now and then, the ESB, um, one or two of the Amplified Versions. I like the NLT, New Living Translation. Um, so, you know, any of those Bibles are great Bibles. So Job 38, let's listen to this. Let's answer some questions. Then the Lord spoke to Job out of the storm. He said, who is this that obscures my plans with words without knowledge? Brace yourself like a man and I will question you and you shall answer me. Where were you when I laid the earth's foundation? Tell me if you understand. Who marked off its dimensions? Surely you know. Who stretched a measuring line across it? On what were its footings set? Or who laid its cornerstone while the morning stars sang together and all the angels shouted for joy? So here we see God answering Job. And did you notice that? That God measured off, you know, he got his ruler out and his measurement and he measured off the foundations of the earth, right? He built the universe to specifications. But did you notice there, God talks about the angels? So the angels, the sons of God, um, when, well, verse 7, while the morning stars sang together. So as God is creating the, the earth, the angels are singing together. And it says that they, the angels shout for joy. You know, whoa, look at that. And they're shouting for joy. That's the angels. And my understanding is at this point, none of the angels had fallen, right? Because this is before the earth's created. This is, this is at the creation of the earth. And so the angels are rejoicing right so in amongst that would be satan he will be there and this is how the 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 demons in the new testament know who jesus is because they know jesus from eternity right when they cried out and said i know you you're the son of god and jesus said be quiet or in english we'd say shut up because the 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 the, the demonic power knew who jesus was i know who you are and jesus wouldn't allow them to talk so this is, this, is, this is interesting, isn't it? It's interesting, interesting to grasp eternity and how the earth came about. It was laid with foundations. And you can read through that Job, that, that whole stuff on Job. It's wonderful. Beautiful uh, prose and questions by God to Job are like, you know, do you understand? You know, do you understand these things? And Job has to at the end go, no. No, I humble myself in dust and ashes. And I think we have to be a bit like this with Genesis sometimes, right? It, you know, can we understand everything? Uh, not in this present world, I don't believe, right? We're not at that time in history, in my understanding. The logic, the God-given logic that God's given me is, is I don't know all things, do I? Do you know everything? No, we know in part. One day we will know fully, but that's not yet. We're still sending satellites to the sun to learn about the universe. So it's clearly we're not in that, pre that age where we know everything. We, we don't. And we're still learning things from the scriptures. I've really enjoyed uh, digging into, researching Genesis 1, 2, 3, and 4 over the last three months. And the stuff I've, I've enjoyed looking at the animals and the cells and the plants. And the more I've looked at it, the more... Um, the more I realize God's design, his creation. You know, I was looking at the cell this week through scientists. I am not a cell person, but I enjoyed looking at it. And they're, they're discovering that in the cell, there are machines. There are biological machines literally m moving at the cell level, tiny, tiny atomic structures, right? It's so complex. It cannot come about through evolution it is impossible it is so complex that it's beyond our understanding and the scientists say we haven't even begun to understand the cell and you and i have trillions of cells in us all of us so we have to humble ourselves and, and understand we don't know everything but we're going to try right we're going to try really hard to understand so let's see how my slides are doing They'll come. Here we go. So last week I talked about being on top of a mountain and you take your bearing from the summit of the mountain, walk, 
stop, change bearing and go off on this red line, avoiding the danger cliffs without walking off these cliffs. So those cliffs, let's see if I've got a picture. Yeah, those cliffs are these cliffs. And I was climbing up here with a friend up over here in a whiteout. A whiteout is where you can't see anything. You can't see anything. It's white and you're on snow and it's white. And we did actually hear a noise and we were near the summit up here. And as we came off the summit, there was a dead person. And a lady had stepped off and she was a mother of two. And you know, that's sobering. It affects you. So we live in a dangerous world. You know, people are having fun and, and suddenly they can step off a cliff. The scripture is like that. Okay, we have to go back and use the compass of the scripture with the Holy Spirit, with you, our friends. We need one another like if you listen in your groups each of you bring something that is a different facet a different part of it we need one another um who is able to keep you from falling ultimately who is able to keep us from falling christ right so jesus ultimately is the one who keeps us from falling right yes we can learn the scriptures yes yes we have our friends but it is he who keeps us from falling um, and we need the spirit of truth. We need to know truth. And that means that all of us have to take out of us stuff that's not quite truth. We pick up stuff through our life, take it out, and put in truth, right? Re reality. Okay? So coming off mountains like that, um, you have to follow bearings. And like I've said, I'm trying to repeat myself because this is what Jesus does. This is the compass, and we have to use this as our guide okay is that is that fair okay let's get into the book of genesis so let's go to genesis chapter 3 and last week i talked about uh, mankind and mankind was made in three parts uh, the same as the father the son and the holy spirit were spirit soul and body and within our body is incredibly complex how many miles of uh, blood vessels were there in the human body so, what, so, so say 75,000 100,000 100,000 miles of blood vessels if you were to string them all out um, do you know last year they discovered they believe a new organ in the human body think about not knowing everything they discovered a new organ last year. It was hiding in plain sight, and only because microscopes have got um, microscopes have got so small that they've now videoed uh, liquid moving in the skin, and they reckon it's a uh, it's an organ. All right, we don't know everything, do we? <laughs> we really don't. And then you've got the spirit, the human spirit, which everyone has. You know, it's dead to it's dead to God until you're born again. Then it's alive to God, and suddenly the Bible becomes interesting. Whereas before it was just a dull book, now it's like, oh, it's like alive. And you've got your soul, you know, your soul thinks about things. Your soul it uses logic and reasoning. Um, your soul's the part of us, I think, that gets very corrupted, right? Your soul leads you astray. Your soul goes, oh, I'll have another one. Oh, another one's good. Oh, that's another one. Oh, go on, have another one. That's your soul, right? Your spirit's going, stop, stop. Your soul's going, I have another one, right? So you need to lead by your human spirit. If your human spirit's in charge, your soul comes underneath your spirit and then your body will follow. So the lady that got $50 last week, did, was that free will? Did you come and get it by your own choice? Right, so your spirit made a decision and your soul said yes and your body started moving. Right, so it all worked together. That's the, that's the human. Okay, so God made us incredibly well and he said it was all very good right and then he he made eve out of us out of the man's side so the man was created sinless so adam was the first man and he was sinless eve was made out of the man's side and she was sinless too 
at this point, right? There was no sin in the world. God said, the only one thing you can't do is eat from the tree of the knowledge, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. You can eat from everything else. Just don't eat from that tree in the center of the garden with the tree of life. So should we find out what happened? How long did they last? I've asked God that question. How long did Adam and Eve last before they fell? Did they fall on the eighth day? Or was it 20 years later? I mean, I don't know. But we last two chapters in the Bible. I'm like, really God? Two chapters before sin comes in? So let's read it. Uh, Genesis chapter 3. Let's read it together. Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, we may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, but God did say you must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden and you must not touch it or you will die. You will not certainly die, the serpent said to the snake, for God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her, to her husband who was with her and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were opened and they realized they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and they hid from the Lord. Uh, and they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man, Where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. And God said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree I commanded you not to eat from? Oh, oh that's a sad day, isn't it? the disobedience of Adam you realize Paul talks about this in the New Testament and it's very clear the woman is deceived right the woman is deceived the man sins and sin comes through the male la line if you read Exodus chapter 4 uh, chapter 20 verse 4 the Bible says and it's just an interesting take on the whole genetics and how does sin travel on it says I'm just trying to find it and then it's uh, Genesis chapter 20 is the you know the Ten Commandments verse 4 um, you shall not make for yourself an image in the form of anything in heaven above or on earth beneath or in the waters below you shall not bow down to them or worship them for I the Lord your God am a jealous God punishing the children for the sins of the parents to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me but showing love to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commandments interesting my niv says parents does some of your versions say fathers okay so uh you know adam was the one that sinned and the sin came down the the the, the father line uh the father line and this is interesting in genetics at the moment with embryos you know they're starting to experiment with creating humans from uh two women they're trying to do that so the male is not even involved anymore so this stuff's going on in the in the uh, scientific community it's like whoa you know so it's interesting stuff here are some points now women don't don't race up and beat me up okay i'm gonna i'm gonna make something an obvious an obvious statement uh eve is deceived i do think women are at risk of being deceived I think this is is a reality okay hang on I'm gonna say something about the men in a minute but I think women if we know that this is this is knowledge and we have to be careful um, uh, and you say well Richard where do you see that well I see that a lot in people that are led astray into all kinds of weird occult stuff and my wife and I agree it's very often it's the women that get into the very odd belief systems whatever it is okay now the men, we're, we're at risk from Genesis chapter 3 of not saying anything. I mean, if you read this, the man is just, just there with Eve. He was meant to be in charge, right? He was meant to be the covering for the woman. And, and he doesn't say a word. I mean, he's just, he's just there, just watching it all, knowing it's wrong. 
and eats the fruit knowing that he's not to do it because the word of God's clear Adam sinned Eve was deceived okay now God God through this actually is incredibly compassionate on the man and the woman the woman he says you know out of you well let's read it let's go on with Genesis so we got to about verse 12 wasn't it no we have verse 10 chapter 3 he answered he answered I heard you in the garden I was afraid because I was naked so I hid and he said who told you you were naked have you eaten from the tree I commanded you not to eat from the man said the woman you put here with me she gave me some from of the fruit from the tree and I ate it so the man's blame shifting she did it you know wasn't me then the Lord God said to the woman what is this you have done the woman said the serpent deceived me I ate so the woman's now realizing I've been deceived I'm now naked I realize it so the Lord God said to the serpent because you have done this cursed you are above all livestock and all wild animals you will crawl on your belly and you will eat dust all the days of your life and I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers he will crush your head fantastic here's God giving the first messianic prophecy he will crush your head the man out of you woman out of your seed some of your translations will say seed beautiful out of the seed of the woman the embryo of the egg of the woman will come one who will crush the head of the snake oh that's good you have John 3 15 you have Genesis 3 15 you have the first messianic prophecy of God and Paul talks about this in the New Testament Paul talks about this a lot Let's see if I can find it. 1 Corinthians 15. Let's see if I can find it quickly. Oh, yes. 1 Corinthians 15. You don't have to look this up quite yet unless you want to. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 25. For he, Christ, must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. Right? And it says somewhere else in the Bible that he will crush the serpent. Okay, so isn't that beautiful? Right in the Garden of, of, of Eden, after the fall, God beautifully says to Eve out of you will come one you out of your your life you will be the mother of all living out of you will become one who will redeem the situation and he's going to rescue the whole of mankind and and the, and, the, and God says and and you snake will strike his heel well did 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 someone ever have their heel struck what happened on the cross Jesus had his heel struck you know literally you know nailed through the covenant process and he still got those scars right he still got the signs the scars of the covenant on his feet and on his hands so you know you know when you meet Jesus because you'll have scars right when he comes back and he stands on the Mount of Olives and people will see the one whom they pierced it's going to be Christ right amazing stuff right at the beginning of the Bible uh, then God says in verse 16 to the woman he said I will make your pains in childbearing very severe your pain with painful labor you will give birth to children all right women have any of you had a painless birth uh, uh, have any of you had a uh, childbirth that's been painless no no matter with all the drugs that we have nowadays it's still painful right there's we we can't escape god's words here there's still pain today uh your desire will be for your husband and he will rule over you sweetheart my, my wife's here say hello catherine <laughs> is your desire for me absolutely. <laughs> she said the right answer there yeah she said absolutely <laughs> um and he will rule over you to Adam he said because you listened to your wife and ate fruit from the tree about which I commanded you you must not eat from cursed is the ground because of you through painful toil you will eat food from it all the days of your life it will produce thorns and thistles for you and you will eat the plants of the field by the sweat of your brow you will eat your food until you return to the ground since from it you were taken 
for dust you are and to dust you will return wow so we adam are are born in in dust we are we are born perishable us men and women we are made of dust we're all gonna die right at some point we're all gonna die no matter how many healings you have in your life at some point we're gonna die because that's the curse on 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 the land and death death is the final the final enemy to be destroyed oh death where is your sting oh grave where is your victory the sting of death is sin and death is the last spiritual power if you will to be you know got got rid of by god at the end of time okay and this is still true today adam verse 20 adam named his wife eve because she would become the mother of all living i love that i i've, I've thought about this a lot i'm i've i've had a fresh revelation of god's love for the man and the woman in this whole passage the compassion and the kindness of god you know out of you woman will come uh, all mankind um, and then adam the first thing we hear adam saying here is he names his wife eve because you're going to be the mother of all living now that's nice that's just it's just really nice it's like they both got the plot they both kind of got it it's like oh rats now we're in it but this is the situation okay let's do it you know we can we're gonna struggle on now the lord god now the lord god that's his name that's jehovah you know jehovah uh, elohim and that's that's the covenant god jehovah the the pre-existent one the one who's always been jehovah god that's his royal name if you will so verse 21 the lord god made garments of skin for adam and his wife and clothed them and the lord god said the man has now become like one of us we have this plur plurality again now i thought god was one one god here are israel the lord our god the lord is one but here we have this 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 plurality right uh, you know the godhead in perfect unity in one as jesus said i and the father are one you know he and me i and him we are one we're in perfect agreement not my will as jesus said your will be done father jesus coming under the father's authority you know jesus submitted himself to the father lord it, father if it's your will i'll do it i'll go to the cross they're one in perfect unity the mystery of the godhead the trinity the, tr the trinitarian god is in the scriptures you can see clearly uh the the god of 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 the new testament holy spirit father and son so god god says the lord god made garments of skin for adam and his wife and clothed them all right so here we have the first sacrifice now it's not it's not said much in the scriptures here but you know where how did god get this skin and i won't I won't belay, uh, you know, um, beat this point up too much. But the logic is, if God made garments of skin, He had to kill an animal. So I've thought about this over the summer. Things like, can you imagine the horror of Adam and Eve? Let's say they'd lived for thirty years in perfect Eden, and then suddenly God has to kill an animal, and they see that. I mean, if I see animals killed now, it sometimes, you know, it'll turn my stomach. You know so can you imagine adam and eve kind of oh oh that's, that's just hor you know horrible but that's the cost of sin it takes blood to take away the sac uh, blood to take away the sin so here we see the kindness of our god he covers adam and eve he covers their sin wow what a father you know you've messed up but i'm going to cover it i'm going to clothe you i'm going to clothe you from your nakedness right i'm going to take care of you and then I'm going to push you out of the garden because I can't allow you to take from the tree of life now that you're sinful because then you'd be in, in eternity with sin so that's why God then puts the angels there with the flashing swords the cherubim to to stop us living in eternity with this wretchedness I mean what a wretched man I am right I, I don't do what I want to do and what I what I don't want to do I find myself doing 
You know, that's what Paul said, right? This battle of the, the soulish, the, the sinfulness of our soul and the, the, the will of the Spirit, the will of the Spirit wanting us to, to live for Christ and the, and the, and the will of the soul, the, the flesh wanting to lust and desire and, and hurt and pain. You know, so God, God put in here his, his rescue plan for mankind um, and, and he covered us. So at verse uh, 22, And the Lord God said, The man has now become like one of us, knowing good and evil. He must not be allowed to reach out his hand and take also from the tree of life and eat and live forever. So the Lord God banished him from the garden of Eden to work the ground from which he had been taken. After he drove the man out, he placed on the east side of the garden of Eden cherubim and a flaming sword flashing back and forth to guard the way to the tree of life. Do we see the tree of life again? yeah if we go to the to the end of say the book of revelation the end of time we have the tree of life appearing again in heaven the tree of life and it talks about in the bible that the nations will come and and use and eat the, the these trees that will be on the sides of the river in the in the city of god with a river flowing through it and there'll be fruit every every month there'll be fruit and it says the leaves will be for the healing of the nations uh, just tremendous you know picture of the tree of life we will see again some Jewish people believe the tree of life is the book of life as well like there's an analogy there between the tree a real tree and and the book of life and and, and we know that truth our names have to be in the, the the book of life right make sure your name is in the book of life if you leave here tonight and you don't know your names in the book of life you know ask God to save you confess your sin repent call on the name of jesus and you shall be saved you will be saved and your name gets written in the book of life right tremendous stuff okay i want to look now at our enemy does anybody else want to look at our enemy i uh, was on wikipedia today and um the cia they reckon has an annual budget of 44 billion dollars 44 billion dollars the nro the national reconnaissance office which is all the spy satellites is is into the billions as well it's all it's all classified we don't know how much they spend but our governments around the world spend billions on finding out what their enemies are doing right they watch they listen they record um, and they spend billions on this <clears throat> how much more we as christians should look at who our enemy is who is this serpent we're not told much are we that that line in uh genesis 3 verse 1 the serpent kind of weird i would have said you know if, if a serpent started talking to me i would have gone what is going on what do you mean you know it's like why did what what's eve doing here How, it's like serpent talking to me i would have got a stepped away and you know so it's kind of odd what how, why how maybe these are questions that we need to wait till we're in heaven right but there are animals in heaven that talk you read this in the book of revelation an eagle flies in heaven and says whoa 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 or something like that <laughs> so um you can read about it look it up google it so um yeah so who is this serpent well i think we have to do like forensics we have to look at different parts of the bible and understand who is this serpent yes the bible says he was crafty and uh, more crafty than any of the wild animals so i believe the scripture he was a wild animal right don't know what he looked like we do know that the end of this story is he crawls on his belly um, so let's look at who our enemy is and and look at it respectfully let's look at ezekiel 28 ezekiel 28 and through the bible we get pictures of who our enemy is it's not always uh clear ezekiel 28 i'm trying to get there too and god is talking about a prophecy against the king of tyre so it is a real king a human king but about halfway through it at verse 12 i think it is it, it changes and it gets spiritual so god does this he jumps about in in, in the scriptures uh, there are scriptures in the bible i go what on earth is that doing there well i didn't write the bible you, like like the, the 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 prophecy about 
Jesus coming from a virgin Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14 it you know it says and a virgin shall be with child you read the verses up and down around it it's like how did that suddenly just appear there it's kind of misplaced but that's what God does so Ezekiel 28 here we go so verse 12 uh, the, uh, verse 11 the word of the Lord came to me son of man take up a lament concerning the king of Tyre and say to him this is what the sovereign Lord says you were the seal of perfection full of wisdom and perfect in beauty you were in Edom the garden of God every precious stone adorned you carnelian chrysolite and emerald topaz onyx jasper lapis lazuli turquoise and beryl your settings and mountings were made of gold and on the day you were created they were prepared you were anointed as the guardian cherub okay now that's an angelic reference you were anointed like given authority as the guardian cherub you were a a a a angelic being that was set apart and you had authority um, for so I ordained you you were on the holy mount of God you walked among the fiery stones well, that's an, that's a reference to angelic beings fiery stones you were blameless in your ways from from the day you were created till wickedness was found in you through your widespread trade you were filled with violence and and you sinned so i drove you in disgrace from the mount of god i expelled you guardian cherub from among the fiery stones your heart became proud on account of your beauty and you were corrupted with wisdom because of your splendor so i threw you to the earth and made a spectacle of you before the kings by your by your many sins and dishonest trade you have desecrated your sanctuaries so i made fire come out from you and it consumed you okay so that is a that is an interesting passage that gives us a little bit of forensics about about possibly who the serpent is so let's turn to another one let's look at uh luke 10 18 luke 10 18. now this is jesus talking luke 10 18. I hope I've got the right one. Yes, I have. Luke 10, 18, Jesus replied, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. Christians, we have to take these scriptures real, right? The word of God real. Nothing will harm you, right, from, from the enemy. So Jesus saw Satan fall like lightning. It was fast, right? He sinned and he was out that's how I read that okay and let's look at one more the end of Revelation Revelation 20 Revelation 20 one of the objects of what we're trying to do here as as uh, teachers and pastors is is to help us you learn how to study the Bible we want a church that's studying the scriptures that that is you know um, um, has guides on how to study that you can do study on your own at home that you feel confident that you can stand on the Word of God as truth right and and that you can read the Bible I you you and I can read a Bible by ourselves and be filled with God's wisdom right we can we can hear from God ourselves okay so Revelation chapter 20 what do I have there verse I got one to three uh, and I saw an angel coming down from heaven, having the key to the abyss, holding in his hand a great chain. He seized the dragon, the ancient serpent, who is the devil or Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. He threw him into the abyss and locked and sealed it. So it's an angel that grabs the devil. Note that. It's not Jesus Christ. It's an angel. Jesus delegates it. So we know who the devil is, the serpent, right? So he's the one that's in the Garden of Eden. That, that is him. And he he has deceived the world world it says there uh, locked and sealed it over him to keep him from deceiving the nations anymore until the thousand years were ended so friends this is this is who our enemy is he is a deceiver Jesus says he's a thief a robber Jesus told us he was a murderer from the beginning if you think about Genesis chapter 3 like read it over again this week you will you will see that I think 
from the scriptures that the devil gets the human race to commit suicide he tricks the woman to eat something that's going to kill her so he's a murderer right he murdered them he knew what he was doing eat oh, this won't kill you yes it did it killed them right so that is our enemy uh, don't entertain the enemy rebuke the enemy how did Jesus deal with the enemy one way yeah thank you he used scripture he quoted it is written and he just quoted scripture and he stood on it he didn't explain it he just believed it and he said it is written you shall have no other gods before you done right stand on the word of god use god's word as your as your sword of the spirit against the devil what else did jesus do praise and worship he praised god humble yourself very important you know um, humble yourself before god resist the devil and he will flee from you the scripture is telling us here that the devil cannot sustain an attack for too long he has to flee so we resist we humble under God's mighty hand resist and the devil will flee from us okay we have to learn how to fight our enemy all right let's look at chapter 4 chapter 4 of Genesis You know, I feel God saying to me to look at something else, so I'm going to look at something else, okay? Let's go to 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians 15, and I'll finish with this. I think I've written some notes on uh, chapter 4. No, I haven't. Uh, I wrote a little bit. The main thing out of chapter 4 that I'll, 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 I'll say is, Cain now let me leave that let me do what I feel God's asking me to do let's go to 1 Corinthians 15 excuse me here all right 1 Corinthians 15 um, Paul talks about Adam the importance of knowing that through the one man Adam came sin and Paul teaches on Genesis as fact right he doesn't talk about apes or evolution he stands on the point that Genesis is absolute truth now friends if we lose that and we start to believe well maybe that it was evolved over thousands and millions and millions of years maybe maybe Adam came from an ape right if we start to do that we start to lose historical Adam and when we start to lose the reality of who Adam is, we will start to lose who the one man, Jesus Christ, is. And Paul clearly teaches on this. So I'm trying to warn us. The world is trying to get us to stop teaching about creation. Creation, I read this week, is banned from teaching in English schools. In schools in England now, you cannot teach legally on creation. You'll probably be arrested. Um, this is the battle we're in. We have to, I believe, stand on God's word. And, and proclaim it at the back there there's a picture of the pilgrims progress the guy with the sword and the pilgrims are going over the bridge John Bunyan wrote that book in 1660 1672 and he was a preacher and he preached around his area where he lived in Bedford and and a law was passed that said you can no longer preach outside of the Church of England and so he kept preaching and so this is 1670 1660 friends and he spent 12 years in jail 12 years in jail because he refused to stop preaching the gospel and in that time he wrote the pilgrim's progress which is a world bestseller it's been translated into dozens and dozens of languages it's one of the world's most read books but that was that was he wrote that in jail because he refused to give up the word of god right now if that can happen in 1660 you know it can happen here right too but we mustn't give up the scriptures all right let's read 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 15 I'm going to start at verse 20 
Verse 20, but Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead also comes through a man. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ all will be made alive. And then verse 25, for he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. For he has put everything under his feet. And then go to verse 35, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 35. And I'll finish with this. But someone will ask, how are the dead raised? With what kind of body will they come? How foolish what you sow does not come to life unless it dies. When you sow, you do not plant the body that will, do, that, that will be, but just as a seed, perhaps of wheat or of something else. But God gives it a body as he has determined, and to each kind of seed he gives its own body. Not all flesh is the same. People have one kind of flesh, animals have another, birds have another, fish have another, right? So, we, so all, the animal, all the animals have different kinds of bodies. There are also heavenly bodies and there are earthly bodies, but the splendor of the heavenly body is one kind and the splendor of the earthly bodies is another kind. The sun has one kind of splendor, the moon another and the stars another, and stars differ from star and splendor. So will it be with the resurrection of the dead. The body that is sown is perishable. It is raised imperishable. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. If there is a natural body, there is also a spiritual body. So it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam, a life-giving spirit. The spiritual does not come first, but the natural, and after that the spiritual. The first man was of the dust of the earth, and the second man is of heaven. As was the earthly man, so were those who are of the earth. And as is the heavenly man, so also are those who are of heaven. And just as we, are born, and just as we have borne the image of the earthly man, so shall we bear the image of the heavenly man. So just to wrap up, friends. Um, I've just tried here to, to pick out how important it is, how Paul, the Apostle Paul, is quoting as fact Genesis 1, 2, and 3. He's quoting it, friends, right? So we need to do the same, I believe. Do not lose historical Adam, the one man, right? And he sinned, but out of Adam and out of the woman comes Christ, the next, the, the, the second Adam, right? So Jesus is the second Adam. And, and he is the one that brings us salvation. He is the life-giving spirit. You know, our bodies are made of soil, right? And soil, if you put things in soil, they grow. Whatever we put into us is going into soil, right? Whatever you and I feed our soul, our spirit will grow. So this is why it's important to feed and feast on God's word. Right? Put in God's word, do acts of kindness, love people, because the seed you're putting into your body will produce fruit. Right? The opposite is, you know, if you put nasty stuff in, you know, let's say porn and drugs, it's going to reap a harvest of yuck. Right? It's going to take root and it's going to grow because we're, we're, we're dust. Right? So um, let me just finish off what it says at the end of 1 Corinthians. It says this, beautiful words. Uh, verse 54, when the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God. He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Oh, that's good news, isn't it? Your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Your labor in the Lord, whatever you do for the Lord, working in your jobs, housewives, mothers, looking after relatives, your labor in the Lord is not in vain, right? And here we have, you know, the teaching. Death is going to be, is swallowed up, right? Oh, death, where is your victory? Ha! 
you've been vanquished yes we'll die but we're going to be raised in the twinkling of an eye that's a twinkling right it's like you're going to die and boom you're going to be awake you're going to be raised to life with jesus in an imperishable body be able to walk through walls you know it'd be like in the marvel comics you know you won't just you know you won't die you can't die it'd be imperishable so i hope you are encouraged um next week pastor daniel is teaching i'm looking forward to that it's going to be great and um let's pray and then uh take the notes do some study read the bible read chapter four i'm sorry i've not covered it but um it's in my heart <laughs> you can you can look at chapter four father god we want to thank you for bringing us here tonight lord i thank you for your love for us i thank you that you you uh blessed eve lord you gave her that wonderful prophecy that out of her would come one who would crush the head of the serpent and she must have been comforted by that and i bet she told her children out of you out of me will come one who will crush the lord uh, crush crush the serpent and and out of me will come the lord and lord i just picture that adam and eve told their children these stories and these stories got passed on to noah and then they got passed on to moses and then they were written down and this is this is how this is how we know these things lord and uh, lord i thank you that we're all linked to adam every single one in this room we're all sons and daughters of adam and eve god we love you and lord we humble ourselves before your mighty hand we ask you to help us protect us with your name protect us from the evil one with your great name the name of jesus god bless you amen <laughs>